about more sheep. Uh, can we do that today? Nope. Cabots, huh? More grass covered cabots. Can you believe that's a house, Shimona? That roof? Over the past two decades, we've visited and stayed in a lot of cabins. How old are you? Many of these shelters are so in tune with their surroundings that they seem to have grown with the place. You gotta remember, we came on the land, we had absolutely no money. This cost $8,500 to build. And I got the house, I, could, I couldn't decide on how big the house was, I didn't make that decision. I just tucked it right into the, and that way it becomes a part of it. Right here, right yeah. here in the trees, you know? That's our inside. There's no outside. It's there's, all there's a floor integrated. There. There's something so timeless about a cabin that it would seem impossible to recreate this in a factory. But a few years ago, we decided to begin our quest to create a perfect cabin. Something healthy and affordable that could be reproduced at scale. Look at the little guys. One little cabin after another. What? Cabins, little teeny cabins. Oh, At the beginning, when uh, we didn't have the design, there was only the germ of an idea of, uh, let's say, an essential dwelling. And we thought a cabin would serve that use more appropriately. When we started working on this idea, we, we had one sort of code name. We, uh, this prefix, bio, involving life, right? Which to us uh, was, you know, aspirational, uh, something liked on the land. Using wood, which is a great material. Which feels great and has a great performance. And then as we just realized, we just were closer to the idea of a cabin, something that you intentionally want to make simple and devoid of any stuff you don't need, which is going to occupy mental and special 
room. We thought, well, maybe by using the prefix we already have, bio, and adding cabin, maybe we have the name, bio cabin. To you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Nikki. After years in Europe, we were now living in California, where our backyard was big, and new laws made it easy to add a granny unit to our property. We needed a place for my parents to come stay or even live. So we reached out to architect carpenter friends to help us create a cabin inspired ADU. Hola. How are you? We first met our bio cabin collaborators when they helped us rescue a rundown village home outside Barcelona. You cannot do much things here unless it's your kids. And you want to come in my room? This is not inhabitable as it is now. So that's where we have more fun in a way, you know? This was really difficult to, to build. It feels very light because it's wooden and it's very open. Okay, go. One. Two, three, three, go! I remember we had just finished the restoration of the house and we were just speculating. We were saying, imagine we can use all this Scandinavian and Mediterranean and Californian know-how on something that can be more pure, smaller, more minimalistic. So this one we're turning into a short table slash bed. Yes. Well, there. Okay. Okay. Oh. So we were saying, well, you know, we could create a Muller cabin made of wood that is natural and is healthy. But also, if you make it so precise, so exact and so sturdy that you could basically produce it with machines, oh my God. then you could make it modular. Then you can click models together. And let's say one model can be one studio but then if you click different models together and you, let's say, make a two or three module dwelling, then that could be a living quarters for one person or for two people or for a small family. Destination is on the right. Which way is it? Oh, yeah, I see. I see his little sign. Hola. Qué bien. Wow. <laughs> so what you see here is the initial uh, phase of a prototype of a small house that will consist of modules. Each module, this is one of the modules, is nine square meters, which is around the size of a room. And we will produce the first prototype, which will be a house that is 36 square meters, because that's the legal size uh, in Catalonia. So the idea here is that it's modular. Yes, you can uh, gather the modules so you have one single space. You can separate the modules so you have two houses, you know, one bigger space and then one smaller room. It works more like an office space, which is the configuration that probably we will we'll start with. In fact, this thing that we're seeing, this probably will be a working space. A room that is nine square meters, where we will have two desks, one here and one on the other side. Then here on top, these are platforms that can be moved. This you can move it here and become a desk. But as it is now, it's also the bed. So it can work as a working space, but then in the weekends, it can be a guest room. Al final, la idea es, es tener elementos modulares. Y la idea es, bueno, que se puedan transportar, pues, pues una persona o dos, ¿no? Dependiendo del peso y las dimensiones. Y que se ensamble de, de una manera muy, muy sencilla. 
Y la idea es conseguir pues, pues un efecto como, como si fuera un elemento continuo una vez que esté todo montado. So the idea is this could be built with just two people. Yes. And no machine, some machine. Mm, uh, screw well, just to screw this. But, yeah. Okay. I mean, but it just uh, no but you could do it manually screen. with you know. This. You need any crane? Any yeah, yeah. crane? No cranes to lift up. No cranes. No. Of course, you can choose. You can buy I don't know, three of them or twelve of them, and then depending on how many you have, for example, you could cover all this floor and have a kind of mezzanine upstairs. And then one year after, if you're bored with the mezzanine, you just take the pieces down and then you have a bench here and here or the two tables or, I mean, whatever you, you need. In a way, it's like a Lego. Yeah, I guess that all architects of my generation and younger generations that grew up playing with Lego. <laughs> I mean, it certainly learns from Lego this idea that, you know, uh, building is easy and building is joyful. Maybe one thing that this is not like Lego is that it's not plastic. In 200 years, your destination will be on the right. Hola! Hey, Mera, no? Hola. 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 It's really bigger. It's, it's really bigger big. than I thought. Yeah, yeah, it's quite tall also. Oh. Kim, can you show us? How tall is it? To the top, I think it's five meters and a half. Yeah. And it's so narrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, because of course, it, this is one module of this additive system. So this is kind of the smallest version, the single module model. So you assemble it on site? Yes. So this is kind of more like the idea of the flat pack system yes. that is very easy to assemble and disassemble all the components. Also, all the components are less than 50 kilos each, which means that two people can carry them not only easily, but also legally. When you talk about one component, people can transfer, like the minimum common denominator. Of For example, one component means like this is one pillar no, that goes all the way up. One that you can see here, this is one facade panel from here to here and from here to here. That's one. Yes, that's one. So the, the idea is that in, in principle, all the system is designed so that it can be self-assembled by, let's say, two very motivated people with uh, proper instructions. You don't need a carpenter. Do you see this at the level of like IKEA instructions? I mean, building how I don't know if you can get to that, <laughs> that ease, right? Like a house is different. No, from uh, not, not really. Uh, in terms of assembly, it's the same, let's say, technical difficulty. Yeah, so this is the main structural element of biocabin. Two here, mm -hmm. maybe? Two, like two pieces here, yeah. yeah. Two pieces also, two for the pillars. I think that here, of course, that the difference between assembling a furniture and assembling a structure is that assembling a structure is bigger, heavier, and, and therefore a little more dangerous. The main structure was really, really quick to assembly mm -hmm. because we assembled it on the floor and then we just lift up. It. Yeah, we, we raised the structure. But in principle, you know what comes first, what comes second. And, and it's almost just one tool. Yeah. On side, you don't need to do any screwing, it's just these bolts and that's it. All the screws are put in the factory, not, not on it site. It comes with all the screws in, so it's just tightening yeah. the bolts. Yeah. That's it. Because also one of the other fundamental ideas of the bio cabin is that not only can be very easily assembled, but actually can be reassembled, well, disassembled and reassembled as many times as possible. Because when you put it up here, how long did it take you? To put it in your backyard. Well, it was the <laughs> it was the first uh, the first try. Let's say it took uh, in total four days. Okay, okay, but we are aiming for two days, two days, so that in a weekend you can do it. So this, you want to make sure you're not 
training somebody in the, in the field to assemble? The idea is that in principle, if somebody wants to, this could be assembled by friends. Yeah, uh, weekend celebration, let's say, no? Yeah. Barn raising, as you say, in the US, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the ultimate goal of trying to, maybe a little utopian goal, trying to see construction as a celebration and a, a not as a pain in the ass as usually it is for very good reasons. And it, I mean, it makes sense that it is because it's heavy things and dangerous things. But here we're trying to, in a way, approach it from a totally different angle, which is, could we make a building that actually is easy to assemble and uh, joyful, no? It's a celebration. So the idea is, is to build this cabin without a crane. I mean, it was the minimum minimum. I mean, the, the most sophisticated auxiliary element that we had is the ladder. But then we've had a lot of work to, to put all the, the panels that make the roof on the roof. Because maybe on this model are a little bit heavy, but we have changed for the next model we have make some changes. This all comes from, you know, going to a construction site. The people who work in these places, they have a hard work. So I think as architects, if we, you empathize with these people, you need to find systems that make their work easier. No? So how to build easier in terms of uh, that ex experiencing how hard it is in every way, you know, how troublesome sometimes and complicated building is. As architects, we need to find give solutions for that. And we need to find a way that is uh, fast, that is, you know, that is, but also good, good quality, so we don't have problems. So we left all the structure uh, unpainted. Of course, it's also protected with the same material, but it's not with color. No? So th this way, it's also easier for this assembly and reassembly processes and transportation. It's easier to understand which parts are structural. The main structure is very simple. It's a frame that it, uh, consists of two pillars, yeah. one beam here, one beam on the base of the triangle, let's say, that goes all the way, and then the two gable beams. That's the configuration of one, but when you have two, when they meet, yeah. it's just that this, all this facade is gone, but the rest is exactly the same. Here we are. So yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit of glass, actually. Yeah, yeah. Or... Yeah, as uh, it's the, the again the, the one module, no, the, the smaller unit. Uh, we thought it was a good idea to have this glass on both sides, so. Yeah. You have the feeling of, no, of, of be, being very close to the outdoors and, and, and open yeah. and so on. And also, like in, in this particular configuration, also because uh, the, the surroundings suggest it, I guess. Here we have this open side, no, and this more like closed side. Yeah. And these these things can be uh, reconfigured. So, for example, in these particular configurations, we have uh, six platforms, okay. okay, and they are totally interchangeable. Uh, in this particular one, we have two desks, so you can you have two tables to work, no? Uh, you have two elevated platforms for storage purpose. And then you have these two here that are a little that are together. And of course, this is a bank bed. Uh, so you can have a nap or even like if you have a guest or whatever, you can you can sleep here. In the next refinement of the system, this will have some protection rails. You can just lay them here. <laughs> And here it's, it feels quite spacey, always. <laughs> also, I think that one thing that is, is important in this prototype is that we use all these platforms also during the assembly proce process of the roof. So this worked almost as scaffolding? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so all, all these components here were assembled by inside, so using okay. these platforms here. So a lot of the roof was assembled from the inside? Yes. Yeah. Normally, you would think yes. you'd need the crane or something for the roof because it's so high. If, if you are able to assemble all this from the inside, I mean, if you want to make a construction 
easier and safer as possible. No? If you build it from the inside, it's always safer. I think it's a beautiful day of winter, super windy, super harsh outside to understand how nice it's a cozy place. That it's, it feels good and protective. So this is nine square meter. Yes. Uh, it feels spacious. Uh -huh. uh, it's super high. So we have a lot of room here. Mm -hmm. It's not echoey either. Is no. that wood? It's oh. wood and also the fact that the, there is not so many uh, flat surfaces. So there's many, you know, uh, also this helps. So this is the insulation that we used, this wood fiber. And in this particular prototype, we left it exposed. In principle, this will always be covered. The insulation is also made of wood. So all the materials here are organic. Uh, and of course, we have steel for the balls, but that's it. There's no plastic at all. That's important. I think there's a lot of people looking for a healthy home, right? The idea yes. of a clean home. Yeah. So no glues, no, no formaldehyde, no... no Nothing mm. off-gassing. No. One of the main ideas of the bio cabin is to use wood sourced from public forest. Huh? Working in, in Catalonia, and working with wood, you start to kind of trace back these origins and you realize that we have this uh, large amount of forest, 65% more or less of the territory, the Catalan territory is, is forest. And then it's not kept because it's not primeval forest and then, you know, it's man-made in a way, so it needs to be also kept by man. And then every summer it gets burned. So, you know, and then we import all the wood from abroad. So it doesn't make any sense. La intención es hacer la gestión forestal de los bosques, en este caso que son propiedad de administraciones públicas, para mejorar las masas y además mejorar sus condiciones ambientales y de biodiversidad. Lo que intentamos es que con los tratamientos helvícolas que realizamos, que antes has dicho, la limpieza del bosque, no, no limpiamos el bosque. ¿no? Lo que hacemos es tratar la masa. Entonces, con esto lo que intentamos es conseguir unas tipologías de árboles y unas distribuciones que permitan que, esos, que los árboles que vayamos dejando cada vez crezcan mejor y más sanos desde el punto de que captan más CO2, porque crecen mejor y crecen más. Además, que se adapta mejor al cambio climático por el tema de sequías, al haber menos árboles, entonces necesitan menos condiciones de, de aguas y de nutrientes. Además, eh, permitimos que con unos grados de dimensiones y que lleguen a una madurez, también son más atractivos para el tema de la biodiversidad. Entonces, pero ¿él te va a pedir los mejores árboles? No, nosotros lo que hacemos, nosotros nunca podemos ir al monte a buscar lo que me pide él, lo que él quiere para su construcción, porque si no estaríamos haciendo una mala gestión. Esta es la clave. No, este tratamiento con, aplicando fuego nos aporta una protección frente pues, al, a la intemperie, ¿no? a la, a la, al agua y al sol. Y con esta primera capa de, de fuego ya evitas que, que, se, que se siga quemando. O sea, que a veces es más difícil de, de quemar, uh -huh. digamos. Este es el palet. Esto es lo que se hace, lo que el 90% de las empresas que, hacen, que trabajan con madera hacen esto. Eso es un proyecto pues que... Y en vez de hacer esto en, con hormigón y, y ladrillos, lo hacen con madera, pues junto con ellos iniciar un proceso de que la madera derive a un uso más, de más valor. So this is the idea that we integrate the whole process, very importantly, to the sources. The materials, we know where it is. Uh, we have a map with the forest and the trees, even the position of the trees, where this, this bio cabin comes from. Pero 
because we work with uh, these, these public workers who take care of the forests and they tell us, okay, uh, if you want this, we have this forest that works for this and we need to you know, maintain this forest, so we'll take the trees from there, we go there, we see the trees, we see the wood, how they cut it. We can talk, now we know better how they need to cut the wood so that it's easier for him, no? so it's this kind of circular economy in a way. So after we receive the, the wood from the forest, we prepare the wood. So we, we try to, to rectify if there is any curve on the piece. So we classify. So the best ones we use for the longest pieces and the other ones we, we will produce like small elements. It's not farmed wood. And this means that most of the trees were not taken care of during the whole growth process to be as, you know, as tall as possible, as straight as possible and so on. So it's a, it's a wood that is a little more wild and then therefore it needs to be treated in a special way. No? And then the challenge is how this specific wood from all this public forest, how we can make a building system that makes sense with this particular wood. And the way that we found is that we work with rather small sections mm -hmm. and then we add small sections. And the way that we do it is not by gluing them, but by uh, mechanically joining them with these nuts and bolts. For example, this is a pillar no? that it has okay. three, three uh, sections of these red pines. And then we, we just fit them together mechanically. This means that it will never separate. It's easier to do in a workshop. You don't need a very expensive machinery. And also you can adjust it through time. So that's the basic principle that we work with these very small than usual sections of wood and we put them together. And this applies to the whole system. Here is maybe easier to see the structure, no? So this is no, one of the, of the main frames, which consists of the pillar. Okay. okay. Then you have a beam underneath, but you don't see it. You have this other beam here. These nuts and bolts are part of the structure. And those came with the... Yeah, yeah. These kind of bolts? Yeah. We assembly this on the workshop. So we, we can build it quicker. So this is uh, fixed. And this one is the one that is holding the components that can be removed. So this is very easy to just unscrew. You know, I move this around and, 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 and screw again. Uh, if you put another mod module here, you use this one to... Um, this one. Connect. Yeah, this one is the one that, w that connects ah, with the other one. Yeah, so instead of having a, no, a component, you have the next uh, beam and then this, these are the ones that are connecting. Yeah. Uh -huh. And also all the different uh, structural components have the shape that fits each other. To assemble all these frames, he used these domino pieces, which is boot to fit one frame with the other. This is called domino. So this kind of join helps us to put the piece in, in its position without any mistake. And then it helps to not to move the piece. So we'll use a screw just to secure this joint here. But we don't have any kind of glue, so the frame will be fixed in this way. You, is there any use of fountain roof? I mean, the roof I was noticing that probably gravity is helping pieces to stay yes. together. Is that correct? This is half wood. So it's, a, it's the simpler version of tongue and groove. This is just half uh, wood, which means that one fits the other, you know, like it just kind of fits by geometry, but they don't get stuck together. It's, it's, not, it's not tongue and groove, okay. all these parts here. It's just half wood. You can see it on the sides. It's a principle in which shapes are helping. Yes. This is basically for, for stability, but also for air tightness and water tightness and so on, no? because the geometry of its joint prevents rain and, uh, and air uh, to go through. So these elements here were put it together. And then you can just tighten the bolts from the inside. Yeah. Yeah, because the thing that I did explain before is very important. This uh, roof components, they are fixed by geometry and then fixed by another element that is bolted on the outside. But these are not screwed to the structure. So everything is kind of working on compression. compression. 
Okay, so that makes it very easy then. You know, once you unscrew the bolts the, that hold them on the, on the sides, you just take this out. And that's also why we applied this uh, half boot principle in all the system. And that's why it's like to the smallest detail, to the, the biggest one, no? Because this allows you that if you have two components, they can meet each other, but you can still take them out. If it was tongue and groove, once they collide and, and, and get together, you will never be able to take them out mm -hmm. without breaking them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now we have a floor up here. Yeah. Our third person's up. coming. Yeah, <laughs> we we think it's here. safe for three. <laughs> it took us uh, how much? Two minutes to do it. No, no, and again, eh, it should take one minute because one of the things that we have uh, improved in the newer version is that this is super tight okay. and then it's not so easy to remove. Okay. But actually, these are, are 40 centimeters separated from each other. You can lift it up or put it down. No? So, for example, here you could put it here and it becomes a, a bench no? because it's 40 centimeters from the floor. So you can sit here and use it to chill out. Like a sofa or, yeah. 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 So what we're standing on are platforms that can be benches, desks, and a floor. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just the same component can be same. everything. Yeah, so this is the like the main idea of, of the video cabin that you can use all the elements in all the parts. Everything is a system that provides everything, no? the, from the stools to the, the benches. In the design, yeah. we have some pieces. This piece here can be removed and underneath you can have electrical wiring and even plumbing. So the idea is that, that base, you could have all the kind of electrification or the plumbing system. Here we have 10 centimeters of insulation, which is adequate for a temperate climate. If, let's say if we were to build this, you know, in a much more colder climate, we're thinking about a way to use the same system that yeah. we can have 15 or 20 centimeters mm -hmm. of insulation. Okay, so and that would give you an R value that is going to be enough. Yes, more than enough. Uh, we have some elements, some cushioning and... <laughs> I can also bring some beers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we can, yeah, give things one way or the other here. Yeah. And then... It really fits two people, too. Yeah. Because it's, uh, each of these is uh, 40 centimeters, so two is 80 centimeters, which is a, uh, the width of a bed. So this is literally a, a queen-size bed. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, a little... Uh, it's longer than a, a queen-size. So this is like a, a camper van, the upside of the camper van? Right, except bigger, <laughs> a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. And more insulated. And more insulated, yeah. It's funny because this is just one. Yeah, yeah. So three will look or will feel yeah. more than three times bigger than one. In a house, do you see this being more permanent? Like making a floor that's more permanent or will it always be like this when it's a house model, a living model? When it's a minutes, house or, model, yeah. probably not. Um, it will be minimum four modules. It could be more, of course. Our idea is that probably from these four modules, at least one or two will be covered like this and it will be quite permanent. And then maybe one is kind of changing. So this versatility option. So let's say you undergo changes in, in your life. Mm -hmm. Can your bio cabin change with you? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. There's changes that are over generations. This cabin can last for more than one or two generations. So maybe you know our, our kids have different needs and they, they can be able to easily change it. But also there is this kind of seasonal needs, no? maybe from summer to winter, because the climate is different, and therefore how we use the space is different. And then also there is this kind of more like daily changes that are the most difficult ones to really make sense. But if this is again easy to move, you know, at some point, uh, you know, you're working and this is your table, but you know, you move it, you put it down and then it's your bench and then you know you can have lines there and, and it's okay it's okay because it just takes 10 seconds to do it you know if it does if it takes more than let's say 20 seconds nobody will do it but if it's 10 seconds it's the same as moving a chair no? so so that for example that element could could be like a bench and 
regular table, but also a standing desk. Yes. And then shelves. Yeah, because it's 40, 80, 120 centimeters. So, do, is there a precedent for this? I mean, is there, are, have you seen other people trying to make uh, small cabins with s just small components that can be built by two you people know, without uh, a crane? Not ex I mean, maybe we know we take bits and pieces of uh, experiences from yeah, other cases. I do like the way everything is almost clicking. I can see how somebody could assemble this even on very bad weather conditions. You could have this up probably in less than a day. There is a central heating point, a heating stove and not a cooking stove. There's bunk beds. Then you have a seating area. I've been inside some of those. This doesn't feel like those super rickety. Yeah, yeah. Very small. Yeah, yeah. And, and this feels somehow more solid. Yeah, yeah. I'm more like a real thing. As you know, we are interested in doing, putting a bio cabin in our backyard. And we're going to have three, three or three? Three. Okay, and that's enough to make uh, like a, what they call an ADU in California. A I think there's yeah, a little kitchen, a little yeah, bathroom. Yeah, yeah, we checked it and what you need to comply is that the elements that you put inside, there's, there's a kind of a minimum, no? there's a toilet, yeah. there's a, this kind of thing. Right, that, that there's yeah. enough space for a toilet, yes, yes. a kitchen, and a yes. bedroom. So the only difficult thing is earthquakes and some of that yes, structural, yeah. like, but this this would comply yeah. with the way the wood is. The wood's strong enough, yeah. the whole yeah. system's strong enough for I mean, we need to... And also foundation would yeah. probably be part of that, right? Like what they require for foundation. Yeah, but the foundation is easier because it's much, much more standard in a way. We have these standard steel plates that connect yeah. the whole structure to the foundation. So it's just a matter of making a foundation that complies with the code. This is uh, also a, a little experiment because yeah. this is temporary. Therefore, it's kind of the minimum expression of a foundation. Also because it's a quite a light structure, so the challenge is not so much the weight, but actually the lift. Mm -hmm. Especially here, as you can see today, it's quite a windy area, so that you know, it doesn't fly away in a way. <laughs> So what we did here, this is one of the locks from the trees that make the, the house. We dug a hole that is 40 centimeters deep. It's also a long bolt that has the legs, our L. And then we just stuffed it with gravel to add some weight. And then we just made a hole in the, in the lock. What this does, is that it's kind of tight to the ground, okay? From here to up is a kind of a standard system, which is this uh, very standard plate that holds the, the pillar. That's the kind of the more specific foundation for, for this case, because this is in principle, will stay here for maybe a year or something, and then we'll move, no? I think that there is a huge challenge that hasn't changed very much historically with these prefabricated buildings is that there is a stigma when they look too prefabricated, no? We want uh, cars to look like cars, but houses, you know, it's a di this kind of industrialized look. I mean, there's some people that like it, but it's not for everyone, no? So it's a kind of a unsolved challenge. We believe that we can actually solve it. And in a way we can solve it, not just disguising it as if it was not prefabricated mm -hmm. and you know that it looks like a regular house, which is one of the mainstream prefabricated houses. You would never say that it's prefabricated because they hide their own character in a way, but in a way finding a way that the, it's a little more true, no? that it shows that it's uh, made with components and that you, know, that you can assemble and disassemble, but it, it's appealing, that it's beautiful. No? This works as a balance to the house, but also, of course, it could work as a house for people who actually want to live this way, no? So homes 
became an investment. And we probably forgot the meaning of home. You want to have a home that improves over time, that ages well. And you also want to participate in the beauty of a place. A house that doesn't hide the structure and highlights the elegant simplicity of the materials, but also the way it's built. That's the dwelling we want to have. It's not a simple equation to solve. Is it possible to build a simple home that can combine quality, style, a sense of place, a relative affordability? A wooden construction can be precise and sturdy and long-lasting. We know because we visit churches made of wood in Scandinavia. And they've been standing for several hundred years, some of them almost 1,000 years, and they are fine. Can you believe this church is 800 years old? You know, it's a good question. Wood can be precise and long-lasting, but the wood is just one material. A dwelling is a soul also, and that's the quest we are interested in. <laughs> 